What's up, enthusiasts? Will here. Appreciate you checking out the channel. Behind me is a 1998 Porsche Boxster. It belongs to my buddy Aaron. And, you know, I know that a lot of you are stuck at home and maybe you're looking for some Porsche joy. And so I thought I'd bring that to you. I don't know a whole lot about Boxster. So uh, obviously he does, given that he owns it and he's going to talk us through it. He's got a YouTube channel, by the way, called Help Me DIY. Uh, I'll put a card up to that channel here in this video, but he does a lot of how-to stuff on this car. He's tricked this thing out, uh, put a lot of time into it. And so, you know, if you have one, if you're interested in learning about getting one, his might be a good channel for you. So uh, let's jump into it. We'll meet Aaron and have him talk us through it. All right, Aaron, uh, this is my buddy, Aaron. Aaron up, has a, uh, a YouTube channel called Help Me DIY, and he also has an exceptionally tricked out 98 Porsche Boxster. He's gonna tell us a little bit about this car today, uh, and then we'll tell, or he'll tell you a little bit about his channel too. So Aaron, tell us about this Boxster, starting with how you um, came across it. The car. Yeah, so the way I got this is actually a pretty interesting story. Uh, I'm a huge BMW guy, and uh, I have an M4 as my daily car and I wanted something a fun convertible weekend kind of car so I was actually looking at an E36 convertible and I got a guy at work who has a E36 M3 and he actually talked me out of it and suggested looking at Boxsters so I didn't really know much about Porsche I've never owned one I did know that my roommate in from Tampa owned a Boxster I was actually his roommate when he ordered it so it's a it's a cool story of we went to Reeves Imports together in Tampa for when they unveiled the Boxster. He ended up ordering a Boxster, waited six months for it to come in, and uh, this is it. And I actually drove in it, uh, actually rode in it a couple times. He would never let me drive it, but he always garaged it at our apartment complex. So I called him up one day and I was like, hey, Paul, uh, somebody told me to look at Boxsters. So, I just wanted to find out some info from you. And he said, oh, did you see the ad? And I said, what ad? And he said, less than 24 hours ago, I listed my Boxster for sale. And I said, shut up, that's, that's impossible. I actually had plane tickets to fly down to Tampa three days later because it was my wife and I's five year anniversary. And I said, don't tell me anything else about it. I'm buying it because this is fate that you happen to be selling it and I happen to already have plane tickets. So I flew down and drove it back. So it was my first fly and drive. The fly by and drive. We all love that. That's uh, like yeah. a bucket list item for every car guy. Yeah, yeah so I, I got to do that with this one. It had, it was 20, you know, 21 year old car now and it just hit 60,000 miles when I bought it from him. So I actually hit 68,000 miles on the way over here today. It's 13 months later. So I've done quite a bit to it in 13 months. Uh, it kind of propelled my YouTube channel with my Boxster content. So I have uh, everything I've done to it. I have made a how-to video and posted that on there. So I started with just the mechanical stuff that it needed because he, even though he had serviced it exclusively at Porsche, they of course did the bare minimum of things to it including like you know uh, one oil change every other year because he had super low mileage on it uh, so i did you know fuel filter coolant changes uh, all kinds of just typical normal maintenance and then i started getting into modding it so it had a four spoke steering wheel and i upgraded it to the three spoke wheel it had the old school tape deck in it and so i put in a carplay head unit upgraded all of the dash speakers and the door speakers uh, the seats were actually really narrow the stock seats and not that comfortable so i found a mechanic here when i got back into town that actually races boxsters so he is, he's been a great find and help. Uh, he happened to have some Cayenne seats from his old Cayenne sitting in his shop up on a shelf and was not interested in trying to ship them anywhere, but he did want to sell them. So for $300 installed, I bought some Cayenne seats that are a little bit wider, but direct bolt-ins. Uh, let's see, so I, uh, what else have I done? So I just recently had it completely repainted uh, the original 
guards red color and had it ceramic coated. Uh, I, while they were painting it, I had the bumperettes removed and fiberglassed in to fill that in. Uh, I have a Joe Toth ducktail on the back now to replace my rear spoiler. And I bought some LED tail lights and installed those. And those are actually, I think, my favorite upgrade of the car. It drops a good 15 years off the looks of the car. Now let's talk about the front bumper. The front bumper I find fascinating. Yeah, the front bumper, I found uh, another guy on Facebook that had installed one. So I worked a lot with him over the phone. The front bumper is a GT3 style bumper. Uh, it actually came in a box folded up and you take it out of the box and put it in the sun and it opens up to its current shape. Uh, it took me a while to get it fitted properly, but I have a whole video on me doing that. So the first one they gave me did not fit very well. So they ended up sending me a second one. Wheels you had redone. You have the mock center locks too. Yep, so I found another guy on one of the forums who does these center caps. So they kind of look like center locks. Um, he stopped making them for a while. Uh, so I found some used ones from another forum member. So he's going to start trying to make them again, but he's in China and that's not a great place to be these days to get a lot of work done. <laughs> so I'm waiting to hear back from him until he starts ramping production up. And hopefully uh, I'm gonna get some gray ones because he also has some gray ones that will now match the wheels. So I just repainted these wheels, had them sandblasted. And last weekend took them down to Charlotte, had a guy help me paint them down there course made a DIY video for that. Uh, I have repainted the calipers myself, put in some cross drilled rotors. Uh, just yesterday I added some wheel spacers, some 15 millimeters in the back and 20 in the front so they help fill the wheel wells out a lot better. Uh, I installed some Bilstein PSS9 suspension. I put in a new exhaust. Well, let's fire it up, let's hear that exhaust. Can you do that? What? Yeah. All right, so what I like most about it, uh, I just have really enjoyed working on it. I was really shocked at how easy a mid-engine car is to work on because when I bought it, it's the first mid-engine car I've owned. And I was like, oh, that's gotta be terrible to access, but it's actually been fairly easy from underneath or on top to get to all the stuff that I've needed to do to it. Uh, there's still plenty that I want to do. Well, what's next? What's the most urgent project? All right, so one, one thing people always talk about this car is the IMS bearing, and everybody's tired of hearing about that. Um, I had some, when I did my oil change a couple weeks ago, I had some oil, I mean, some metal flakes in the filter, which is always oh, a bad sign. So people always, of course, jump to IMS bearing as being the culprit. Uh, they were non-ferrous flakes though, so they weren't magnetic. So I don't think it was the IMS bearing, but to change it out, it would be a lot of work and at least two grand to do, probably closer to three. And as my mechanic pointed out, if the engine blows up and I have to get a new engine, I would be getting a faster engine from either a Boxster S or something else and it would be you know maybe four grand to do that so i'm gonna roll the dice and uh if it blows up it blows up and i'll get a better engine out of it <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> all right man we'll appreciate you walking us through this car so you'd recommend boxster ownership then oh yeah it's i think that the boxster right now is the best bang for the buck. Like I bought this for 7,500 bucks is what I paid for this car. It is a blast to drive. Uh, it looks great. I get compliments on it all the time. Actually, when I drive my M4, I get less compliments and it's Austin yellow metallic. So people ask me about the color of that sometimes, but when they see this, they just assume that if I own a Porsche, I'm, it must be, you know, super valuable and expensive. 
So uh, you can get them out there really cheap. Um, they are great cars, they drive great, and they're a lot of fun. Convertibles, of course. Okay, so there you have it, a pretty thorough overview of a 98 Porsche Boxster uh, by a guy who's obviously very passionate about the car. Um, you know, I've been kind of hot and cold on those cars over the past couple of years. You know, you see them on the PCA classifieds for like 10 grand and less, and they look really, really clean. So it's been tempting. I have not yet picked one up. I have really been uh, focused on my air-cooled Porsche 911s, uh, my 95 and my 86. So if you have made it this far through the video, I do appreciate you checking uh, out the channel and I hope you'll subscribe and uh, I hope to see you next time. So thanks again for watching.